Come on, the born in new life. He put those hands together all over this place. Come on, we're welcoming the Holy Spirit to dwell in this place. Come on, put those hands together. Come on, come on. Come on, put those hands together. Yeah. Everybody say it. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, you are welcome. Come on in, take a seat, and have it our praise God.
Come on in. Come on, come on. Let's celebrate the Lord in this place. He's indeed worthy to be praised. Come on, let's lift up the name of Jesus this morning. He's worthy from the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. Our Lord and Savior is worthy of the praise this morning. Somebody shout this morning. He woke you up. He started you on your way. You made it in here despite how you feel. You pressed your way this morning and you ought to celebrate him this morning and give him the glory that's due his name. Come on, let's celebrate the Lord in his place. Oh, you magnify the Lord and let's exalt his name together. For the Lord is good. His mercies endure forever and ever and ever. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. We serve a mighty God this morning. Praise his name, praise his name. Good morning. Born in New Life. We welcome those that are streaming in New Life everywhere. Those that are in the sanctuary, it is indeed a privilege and an honor to be in the house of the Lord one more time. Let us stand for scripture reading and prayer. Uh, scripture reading comes from Psalms 100, reading from the New Living Translation. It reads as such Shout with the joy to the Lord, all the earth. Worship the Lord with gladness. Come before him singing with joy. Acknowledge that the Lord is God. He made us and we are his. We are his people, the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and praise his name. Why? For the Lord is good. His unfailing love continues forever and his faithfulness continues to each generation. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you for being in your house one more time to tell you thank you, Lord. Come dwell with us today, Father. Sit in this place. Let your presence rest in the house today, God. God, we thank you for the music ministry that will go forth. We thank you for the singing that will go forth, God. Let it all be sweet to your ears this morning, God. God, we thank you for our leaders, Bishop Kevin and Dr. Linda Willis, God. Rain down and pour blessings like never before in their lives, God. And as you do it in their lives, do so also in our lives, God. God, we thank you for the lives that are coming in from the north, south, east, and west. We thank you that everything that we need in the economy of financial heaven is sitting in this house resting in this place to be able to lift up the kingdom and give you the glory that's due your name God God show up and show out like only you can Father do what you want to do in the house today God Holy Ghost stir up some things in it today God God shake up the atmosphere right now God God move like only you can and we all give you the glory honor and praise in Jesus name Amen Amen. Come on, New Life. If you can remain standing for praise and worship, give God praise in this place. Come on, He's worthy of all of the glory. He's worthy of all of the honor. God, we lift you up. Come on, look at somebody and say, it's my season for grace. It's my season for breakthrough. It's my season for joy. It's my season for peace. It's my season for miracles. How many believe that on this morning? Come on, put those hands together all over this place. Hallelujah. It's real song. It's your season of grace. It's your season of grace. It's your season of joy. It's your season of joy. It's your season of peace. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. That's all we're saying. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. Come on, right here. It's your season of favor. It's your season of favor. It's your season of breakthrough. It's your season of breakthrough. It's your season of miracles. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. Go get it. Come on, say it. Go get 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 your stuff. Go get your stuff. Come on, put those hands together. I'm gonna get my stuff. I'm gonna get my stuff. Come on, everybody. Come on, declare. Go get your stuff. Go get your stuff. I'm gonna get my stuff. I'm gonna get my stuff. Come on, put those hands together one more time. Oh yeah. It's your season of favor. It's your season of favor. It's your season of breakthrough. It's your 
Deliverance. I came for a feeling. God, I need you. 
miracle. We need a miracle. We need a miracle. Say miracle. Miracles. 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 We need it. 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 Come on, everybody. We need breakthrough. How many need a breakthrough? Did you come looking for something? Have you asked God for something? I'm believing on today that my breakthrough is here, that my miracle is here, that my healing is here. I'm decreeing, I'm declaring right now, right now, my blessing is here. Yeah, it's my season. Come on, declare it. Come on, say it's my seed. Come on, you ought to say it all over this place. Say it's my seed. Come on, all. Come on over here, say. Say it's my seed. Come on, you ought to decree it here. Say it's my seed. It's my season. It's my season. It's my 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 my. It's my 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 my. It's my season. It's my season. One more time, clap those hands. Come on, you ought to put those hands on it. Come on, put those hands together. If you really believe it's your season, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Put those hands together. It's my season. I believe it. I claim it. Come on, say it's mine. Come on, say it's mine. Yeah, yeah. Come on, that feels real good. It's my season. Come on, come on. Come on, one last time. Yeah, yeah. Real good. It's my season. I'm walking through it. I'm talking through it. I'm speaking through it. It's my season. It's my season. It's my season. Yes, it is. I'm walking through my healing. I'm walking through my healing. I'm walking through my healing. All over my body. All over my body, all over my body. Yeah, 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 Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. It's your season for breakthrough. It's your season for healing. It's your season for grace. It's your season for peace. Peace in your mind. Peace over your family. It's your season. You ought to declare it. You ought to decree it. You ought to believe it. It's yours. It's yours for the asking. All you got to do is ask. All you gotta do is ask, and it shall be done. I said it shall be done. Hallelujah.
I guess it's your season. Come on, point it. Somebody say, that's, that's, that's just the truth. Tell them it's my season. Come on, you ought to look at somebody and just tell them it's my season. You better give him praise like it's yours. Give him praise like it's yours. Give him praise like it's yours. To God be the glory. Father, we thank you for ministry that comes through the music. We declare it is our season. Doesn't matter what happened in the past. Doesn't matter what the devil has tried to prevent. We are absolutely sure it's our season. Your favor is in the right now. We accept it. We receive it. And we give you praise for it. Thank you that we can discern that. We don't have to keep waiting on it. We can walk into it right now. Give us the courage to walk into it and to take hold of everything you have for us. Come on, there's somebody walking into healing in the season. Somebody is walking into a new position in this season. Somebody is walking into financial increase in this season. Somebody's just walking into a new way of thinking in this season. Somebody's releasing and letting go what has held them down a long time. And they are lighter now than they've ever been because they've discovered all they really need is you. And it's in this season. We give you praise right now. <laughs> we give you praise right now. And then we'll close it by saying, Lord, how we thank you for loving us like this. You've been so good. And we appreciate all of your goodness that we are experiencing, that your word says we could experience. Speak to us like only you can to the end that we leave this place empowered in the name of Jesus. Now, Lord, you know the frailty of our flesh. We submit ourselves totally to your care. Hide us now behind the cross that men might see thee and not me. It is your son's prayer that you would let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh, Lord, my strength, and my Redeemer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Come on, somebody who really loves them, shout hallelujah in this place. To God be the glory for the things he has done. It's your season. I'm not mad about it. It's your season. And listen, don't you change Thursday when stuff starts happening. If it's your season on Sunday, it's still your season on Thursday. Amen, somebody. We give God praise for you. Glad you are in the house. Tell somebody I'm just glad you're here. Come on, get somebody else. Tell them I'm just glad you're here. Give God praise for Dr. Linda, who is in the house, and certainly. You have made it all by the grace of God. Let me get to the meat of the matter. We appreciate Courtney for preaching on last Sunday.
And I, I just appreciate your prayers and the difficulty of this weekend. As uh, we went to Oklahoma to lay my godfather, Pastor John Reed, Dr. John Reed, um, to rest. And uh, two unusual days, both Friday and Saturday. Uh, but God is good. And the Bible says, in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. You can't be that way in some things, Joe, but in everything. Even when your heart is heavy, you still give thanks. And so we were able to gather together in Oklahoma City and give God praise for his incredible life. And I just want to appreciate you all for your prayers. I know some of y'all will look confused. You, you were thinking it was Pastor Wade who was here just a few weeks ago. No, no, no. It was not Dr. Wade. It was Dr. John. It was my father's best friend. This was the man who told me my father was dying. And then this was the man who called me when my dad passed away and had to tell me. Um, and they were fast friends. I don't even know how many years. But to make a long story short, uh, when he passed away, he died on my father's birthday. And they were best friends. And so you can understand how meaningful this is to me. I did not have the privilege of attending my dad's funeral. That's something that bugs me yet to this day. And so I had to get to Oklahoma uh, to be in this service. Amen, somebody. Let me get to the meat of the matter, but it was quite surreal. It was almost like I was going back and coming forward again. So God was good to me because I had to manage the emotions of missing a father's funeral and a godfather's funeral who we affectionately call Pops, who told us, my brother and I, that even though our father went home to be with the Lord, he would now be our father, and he was. And he was 86 years old, but he was a blessed man. And so I thank you for your prayers and for your kindness it means the world to me. Amen, somebody. And uh, even for Dr. Linda, who went and helped the brother get there, because although I didn't say much about how I was feeling, uh, I think it became incredibly apparent uh, how I was feeling. Uh, some folks think that because we pastors preach funerals and all this stuff, that it never touches us or bothers us. I, I love y'all, and, and when I have to stand over you and give a word, there are times when my tears come before I get into the sanctuary. And then there are times when I'm standing up to preach, I need the Lord to hold me. Because I, I don't just see y'all, I have relationship with you. Dr. Linda, we have relationship with you. And, and we could sit where the family sits. Amen. But we, we, don't, we, don't, we don't worship together and love together and live together and then disconnect when tragedy happens. That's, that's not how church works. So I want you to know that we are connected. Amen, somebody. And so I, I just appreciate prayers. Grab Bibles, Old Testament passage of Scripture. Psalms 103. the 103rd Psalm. You've been so faithful to Romans, and I appreciate it so much. Some of y'all have bought commentaries and new Bibles. Don't throw them away. Hold on to them. I, I'm, I'm blessed by the fact that you still have those. Amen, somebody. Psalms 103, verses one through 22, but I'm not going to read 22 verses. Uh, I want to take us through probably verse 12. Amen, somebody. Amen. Bless the Lord, O my soul. All that is within me, bless his holy name. Do you see that? Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. <laughs> who forgiveth all thine iniquities, who healeth all thy diseases. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction, who crowneth thee with love 
tender mercies, who satisfies thy mouth with good things, so that thy youth is renewed like the eagles. The Lord executeth righteousness and judgment for all that are oppressed. He made known his ways unto Moses, his acts unto the children of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to anger, plenteous in mercy. He will not always chide, neither will he keep his anger forever. And he hath not dealt with us after our sins, nor rewarded us according to our iniquities. For as far as the heaven is high above the earth, so great is his mercy toward them that fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far hath he removed our transgressions from us. The grass will wither, the flowers will fade. The word of our Lord will last forever. What Thanksgiving looks like. What Thanksgiving looks like. Tell somebody what Thanksgiving looks like. I, I want to walk into this text with a cute story that when you hear it, it just it tickles you, but it walks us into the mainstream of what David is trying to say. There is this third grader that illustrates this opening for me about Thanksgiving and loving and appreciating God for who he is and for what he has done for us, Steve. This third grader, Elizabeth Gail Hudson, she's a third grader from Boston, Massachusetts. It's almost Father's Day, and it has been her custom to give her father a Father's Day card, but usually it is a card that her mother would purchase she would affix her, Jaleesa, her crooked signature to the Father's Day card. But this year, she decided that she would not let her mother buy her father a card. She decided that this year she would make Sarah her own card for her father. Are y'all hearing me? And she took certain crayons, Kenan, those which were her favorite red, purple, and green. And she took paper, and on one side of the card... With her crayons, she made an incredible picture of her father as she saw him. And then on the inside of the card, she took her blue crayon and decided that she would make a listing of everything that he had done for her, which would say to him why she was so thankful. I wanted you to peep inside of Elizabeth's card to her dad for Father's Day just to hear what she was writing. She said, thank you, Daddy. Thank you for reading me a bedtime story every night. Thank you for tucking me in bed and cutting on the nightlight. Thank you for removing the monsters from under my bed. That might be for some of y'all who saw Deliverance. Thank you for always putting a Band-Aid on every cut. And then she said, thank you for being on the corner every day to walk me home from school. Are y'all with me here? She finished her message to her father. and She spelled it out the best that she could. Let me tell you that it was not correct, but she spelled it the best that she could. For everything you've done, for being the greatest father in the world, Thank you. Is that not cute? And as usual, Elizabeth wrote the words, I love you, and then affixed her crooked signature. I, I wanted you to hear that because Elizabeth walks us into what David is endeavoring to say in this psalm. I want you to catch the carryover because Psalms 103 is David's thank you card for his gracious and loving character, that of God. Are y'all hearing me? It's his thank you card to God for his purposeful actions towards him. It's, it's the psalm where David makes this declaration of praise to God. And, and remember, we just walked through Elizabeth's card to her father 
where she wants to write down all of the good things he has done for her. And she names Eric five things. But when I read Psalms 103, I said, when I read Psalms 103, David lists at least five reasons. He's just like Elizabeth for why he's so thankful and why he loves God so much. Come on. He, he lists five things. Somebody shout five things. He hears the five. He says, David says, he forgives all of our sins. He heals all of our diseases. He redeems our lives. He crowns us with love and compassion. And he satisfies our desires with good things. Y'all ain't hearing me. It's, it's David's thank you card. It's, it's, it's his response to the character and the actions of God toward him. And, and he goes into the psalm and he begins by saying, bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Which is really not just a declaration of God's worthiness, but it's also a demonstration of praise. Because when David says, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, he's saying everything I have and everything I am has to be employed in giving God praise. Are y'all going to help me here? I know that praise, baby sister, is in the DNA of new life. If you have not learned it by now, praise ain't difficult for us. Come on, somebody. I've had some folk who come here and ask us, do y'all church like that every Sunday? I say, yes, yes, yes. We do that every Sunday. But I, I, I want you to know that, that it is important that we give him praise. That our thanksgiving to God yeah, ought to position us where we praise him as a means of saying thank you for being so good to us. And that everything I have is employed in giving God praise. And I know, I know that praise is in our DNA, but I've been some places where folks have said it don't take all that. Are you hearing me? I've, had, I've been places where folk claim we're too loud and, and too boisterous in worship that we're too demonstrative. It don't take all that to give God praise. I just will help you out. You can't just thank praise. My daddy said, you got to do praise. Are y'all hearing me? I know, I know it's good to think thank you. Sometimes you got to open your mouth and sometimes you got to wave your hand. And Courtney, sometimes you just got to move some and because your demonstration, that which is physical, bespeaks your thanksgiving for who God is and for what God has done for you. Come on, is there anybody that's thankful? Come on. I know it's not November, and we're not we're 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 not on the verge of of Thanksgiving Day. But you don't have to wait until November to give God praise. Let me see if I can preach forward. This is Hymn Book Four, and when you get into the Psalms, David is it's powerful. He he wants us to see his personal and inward excitation to praise and thanksgiving. Again, Dr. Linda, he says, bless and praise, and in the, in the context, they are interchangeable. However, it's, it's somewhat of an interpretive argument because when David is, is speaking about bless the Lord, O oh my soul, the, the origin of his statement and the direction of his statement is clear. Watch it. David is talking about blessing and praising God, but he is talking to himself. <laughs> He's calling KJ himself to bless God, praise God, based upon what he has learned about God. I want to talk to some experienced folk who didn't just start walking with God the other day. You've been with him a long time. Your, your, your praise ain't got nothing to do with, with, with the temperature of the music. Oh, no, 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 no. Your, your praise has everything to do with your time with God, your experience with God, your, 
your life with God. And so you bring yourself to a place of praise because of what you have learned about God. And that's why when you get to the 150th Psalms Q, it starts talking about his mighty acts and his excellent greatness. David is teaching us an incredible lesson about praise is that you are responsible for bringing yourself to praise. And the way you transport yourself to praise is when you remember who God is and what God has done for you. And that ought not be too hard because you didn't bring yourself through 24. Here we are in the ninth month, the month of September. And if you look back to month one and ask yourself how you got here, you didn't carry yourself. Can I just say what the psalmist says? Through many dangers. You, you better nudge your neighbor and say, that's my story he's preaching. Through many dangers, toils and snares, I have already come. Well, how'd you get here, Grace? <laughs> Grace brought me. God brought me. Is there anybody who has that testimony that God brought me from January all the way into September? Have I got any help in here? That's how you praise Him. That's how you get to a position of thanksgiving when you start looking back. Don't fool yourself. Cars have rearview mirrors on purpose. <laughs> Sometimes you just need to look back, Emma, and see where you've come from. Y'all ain't gonna help me, but I feel like preaching. I may be tired in my body, but I'm fresh in my spirit. Sometimes you got to look, AC, in the rearview mirror because sometimes when you're looking through the front windshield, you can see where you're going. But folk ain't figured out where you're going is, is inextricably tied to where you've come from. For some of us, you couldn't get to where destiny is if things hadn't hooked up in your past. I'm preaching, but you ain't caught me yet. That's why you love him like you do. He brought you out of something. If you got a rear view mirror, Gary, you coming out of something. Nudge your neighbor and say, that's why I love him like I do. Go and tell him, I look in the rear view mirror and he brought me out of some stuff. He brought me out of some stuff that should have captured me. He brought me out of some stuff that should have hurt me. He brought me out of some stuff that should have knocked me down. And you ask me why I shout like I do. You ask me why I have to run around sometimes. Cause if don't nobody else know, I know what I've been through. Have I got any help in here? Can I preach like I feel? You gotta bring yourself to praise. But there's one more thing. David says we're responsible for transporting ourselves to praise. <laughs> but he says something in the text, Dr. Linda, that blesses me. He says, and forget not all of his benefits. <laughs> the, the word benefit in the Hebrew is not only an act of good, but it's really good treatment towards one. <sighs> all of his benefits, Tutu, means that there are some specific actions in your life that are the result of the hand of God. It, it means that what God has done for you and to you is purposeful. So if you're going to thank him correctly, come on somebody, and if what he's done has been purposeful, then you've got to be specific in your praise and thanksgiving. And you got to be that way because the psalmist, David, here it is, in the text, is, is not random in his reasoning for giving him praise. He is, he is specific in why he's thanking God. Come on, you got the text, watch it. He forgives all our sins. The context is he forgives everyone. That ought to shout right there. He heals all of our diseases, he heals everyone. He redeems us from hell, it means he saved our lives. He crowns us with love and compassion. It is, it is a paradise crown. It, it is representative of our relationship with him. He, he satisfies our desires with good things. He renewed our youth. I'm telling you, 
The actions of God in your life are specific. They're not random. It means God knew what he was doing <laughs> the whole time. And if, Lord have mercy, if God has been intentional in what he has done for us, then our praise can't be vague. Come on, somebody. You ought to look in your life now and put your finger on what God has done. And then go on and tell yourself, I know he did it. Because could nobody do this but God? You got a testimony. That could nobody do this but, like, I know he did it because I'd still be in the hospital. I know he did it. Lord have mercy. I wish I had two or three people. And I'll make the fourth person who absolutely sure of the specific actions of God in your life. Like when I look at this, I don't have to wonder how did it happen? That's why I don't like that song, my soul looks back and wonder. No, 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 I'm not wondering. I know that I got here because God did this, 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 this. And then when he got through with that, he did this, this, and this. Is there anybody up in here who say he did this, this, and this? And then, Scotty, when he got through with that, he got to the back of my life and did this, 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 and this. Can I preach like a film? You know why he did it? Because I put it all in his hands. This and that. This and that. This, this, this. This, this. Have I got any help in here? Is there anybody? Don't let me do that. Don't let me do that. Don't let. Who ah! shot about the specific actions of God? Took your feet out to miry clay. Stood you up on a rock. Put blessings on your life. How fast somebody say, I got a reason, I got a reason. Go get you two people and say, I got a reason, I got a reason. Come on, get you two people, tell them, I got a reason, I got a reason. I'm going to tell you one more time. Get your two people. I got a reason. I got a reason. I got a reason. I got a reason. Can I hand you one more thing? Not just his specific actions, but we thank God, <laughs> Brenda, for things he completed in our lives. If we start talking about what God has completed in your life, we're talking about the establishment of God's favor, but, but through destiny. Matthew 25, he makes Jesus in the parable, says, well done, good and faithful servant. Faithful over few things. Rule over many things. Enter thou to the joy of thy Lord. It's promotion. Come on, somebody. Well, Psalms and Matthew are not connected, but the concept is somewhat the same. We, we thank him for what he has completed in our lives. In spite of us. <laughs> in spite of us. I, I wish you could catch the profundity of that. That you're blessed in spite of yourself. Because your stuff should have canceled you out. Should have disqualified you. 
So, so when that song says, he looked beyond my faults, that'll make you shout. Because your stuff should have disqualified you. But the fact of the matter is, in spite of your crazy sinful life, he brought you to the intersection where destiny was waiting on you and walked you in the direction your life is supposed to go in. Come on, somebody. It does not mean that you did not experience the consequences of your actions. It just meant that it didn't cancel your destiny. So when we start thanking God, we thank him for promotion and elevation because of things he completed in our lives. He got us in a raw state, but there's some things that he completed, hear me, that only he could complete. Have I got any help in here? You know you didn't bring yourself to where you are. You, you don't even have that much sense. You don't have that much foresight. God completed some things in you, not just in your arrival to the place of destiny, but there are some things that, that God has completed in you in spite of not just your own uh, behavior and, and actions, in spite of some things others have done to you to stop you from getting to the place of purpose. Some other things that have happened to you generationally that should have kept you from getting where you needed to be. Some things the enemy did to halt your progress so you wouldn't get to the place of destiny. But we thank God because in spite of everybody and in spite of everything, you still arrived. Have I got any help in here? Not too long ago, KJ, I was flying on a plane. And that plane encountered all kind of turbulence. It looked like, AC, see, that plane was just going to flip over. Have I got any help in here? Little lady sitting about four rows behind me. It was easy to tell that she was afraid. Have I got any help in here? Pilot had come over the PA system and said, we got about 30 more minutes in these turbulence. And, and you could read on her face that she was upset about it. Ah, but when that plane landed and they opened the door, I walked out first. And when she walked out, as soon as she got out, it's like she jumped on the ground. And she said, I'm here in spite of the turbulence. I wish I had somebody who just say, I'm here in spite of the turbulence, in, in spite of how my life has been shook, in spite of how folks have treated me, in spite of what the devil tried to do to me, I'm here. I arrived safe and sound. Is there anybody here? That's your shout. I feel like preaching. In spite of what's been done to you, ah, glory. In spite of what you've been through, ah, glory. You've arrived. Tell somebody I made it out alive. Made it out alive. Made it out alive. I'm going to say it one more time. Made it out alive. Okay, I'll say it for the folk in the back of the church. Made it out alive. Okay, I'll say it for the folk in the choir. Made it out alive. Okay, this is for the gatekeepers. Made it out alive. In case I got some guest relations up in here. Made it out alive. This is for the nurses on duty. Made it out alive. This is for the intercessors. Made it out alive. That's your reason. You made it out. In spite of the turbulence, give God praise. Ooh. Hey, 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 made it out alive. 
don't, don't. And forget now all his benefits. Nudge your neighbor and say benefits. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. David, David help me out. David says, I, I'm, I'm thanking him because he's, he's forgiven me. I, I wanted to shout out of here too, but I couldn't, couldn't shout till I, I gave you one of the benefits. It's, it's, it's verse three. Who forgiveth all thine iniquities. He, he forgives all my stuff. If, if you can't shout for no other reason. If you can't thank God for any other reason. You ought to thank him because he's forgiven you for all your stuff. And I know you're trying to figure out why forgiveness is at the top of the list. Why, why is it Alan healing at the top of the list? Cause, cause he can't heal me till he forgives me. See, I don't even get to redemption until he forgives me. He can't fill my life with all of his goodness until he forgives me first. He can't restore me. He, he can't renew my youth until he forgives me first. And when he forgives me, he tears down the wall of petition between him and me. And he pardons my sin and brings me spiritually to a position of absolution. Where he releases not only my sin, but my guilt. Have I got any help in here? He doesn't release me from the consequences, but once I'm forgiven, he, he, he does something that's powerful. Because if you keep on reading it, the psalm says in verse 12, as far as the east is from the west. You can't go east and west at the same time. As far as the east is from the west is as far as he pushes my stuff away from me. And he, he cancels the indebtedness of my sin and then wipes my life clean. It's called justification. Just as if I've never done it. And whatever I'm guilty of, God never allows that past to come up against me again. He sets me free. Y'all was shouting about purpose. You better shout about forgiveness. Come on now. Da David, David knows what he's talking about. When we start talking about David's worship, David has a reason to be thankful. Da David's a murderer. Come on, y'all. I, I said David is a murderer. David is an adulterer. David got to a place where he was obstinate and arrogant in his sin. In fact, if you read the 51st Psalm, Lord have mercy, it's David's communication to God out of his sorrow and his grief and his embarrassment when he realizes how he has disappointed God with his adultery with Bathsheba. And so when David says he forgives our sins, David is speaking factually. David is talking about this is what he's done for me. It's, 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 it's David saying, my life is purged in the grace of God. Y'all ain't helping me preach. That, that, that my life could be over because of my own behavior and my own sin. But when I look at where I am, I'm here because he forgave me. Is there anybody in here? That's your reason for giving God praise. For telling him thank you. He is forgiving you. You still messed up by some folks who haven't forgiven you. And are walking clean past the forgiveness of our God. Folks can't condemn you. The best they got is that they can stop speaking to you. And won't have anything else to do with you. 
That ain't the worst thing that can happen to you. But if God cuts you loose, if God stops speaking to you, if God determines that he's never going to have anything else to do with you, then that's a critical condition. But David says, he didn't do that to me. And the reason why I shout is because there's ground cue in my life where he had every right to disconnect from me based on my actions. And this is not sin of omission. This is sin of commission. You still ain't catching it. It's stuff I went out to do. This ain't stuff nobody talked me into. This is stuff I wanted. This is stuff I went after. This is stuff I picked up. Y'all ain't helping me. This is stuff I bought. This, this is stuff I tried. Have I got any help in here? And since he's all knowing, he knew that I would do it. Even when I tried to act like he don't know. And he still forgave me. Ooh, y'all quiet. I don't, I don't know if that's quietness or conviction. <laughs> but either one is good. Because sometimes you can't shout. Sometimes the best you can do is just say, ouch. Haven't got any help in here. I, I had to go about a week or so ago and get a cortisone shot from the doctor. And Gabby, he said, this, this, this is going to hurt you. Usually when they give you a shout that has pain in it, they say, uh, this, you feel some pressure. No, no. This going to hurt. Are y'all feeling me? And he stuck me three times. And three times, it hurt. And I've got a pretty high uh, pain tolerance, but th that third time, it was almost Michael Jackson. I was going to reach out and grab him. <laughs> Y'all don't hear me. Sometimes when the word goes out for the preacher and the pew, God says, hold on. This going to hurt. I, I, no, no, not, not pressure. Not sting. This going to hurt. You know, you know it hurts when it moves you. Because every time he stuck me, I moved on the table. That's how you know when the word hurts you. When you can't just sit still and take it. You don't want to move because you don't want nobody to know it's you. And here's the truth. Don't nobody know it's you. But you feel so obvious and exposed in your sinfulness. That you feel like heaven has put a spotlight on you. And don't nobody know your business but you. But that's a cool thing because if you can feel that way, it means that you love God so much that you're not at a place where your conscience is seared and that what you do and the word does not convict you. Have I got any help in here? So if you're hurting, it's in a good place because that means you still have a consciousness for who you are and for who God is. Clap like you're losing your mind. So if it hurts you, I'm not mad about it. Because I didn't open this book to make you happy. I opened this book to help you. Lord, I got to get out of here. Nudge your neighbor and say, he's forgiven me. Tell him that's why I love him. Because he has forgiven me. Give him hand claps one more time. That, that forgiveness is powerful. Come on, somebody. I, 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 I'll, I'll cut through the yard. I, I'll let you go. I know, I, I know last week we had one service and you thought we were going to do that forever. Ooh, Lord. We got another one at 1115. This Sunday and next Sunday. Tell your neighbor and I'm done. He heals my, all my diseases. That which is psychological. 
that which is physiological. Tell them, don't forget your redemption. I'm just putting it in your ear. Who redeemeth thy life from destruction. That's verse 4. David says, I got to quit. David says, my life has been in jeopardy several times. Come on, somebody. If we run through the course of David's life, we can see the places of vulnerability. Because here's David stepping in a valley, in, in, in fact, the valley of Elah, and he's, he's stepping in a valley with a giant. And a giant that has on all of this armor and a sword, and all David seems to have is a sling and stones. But because God is with him, And I got to hurt and quit, but I don't know who I'm preaching to. Sometimes you, you're facing a giant. Financially, relationally, even physically. And it looks like you're outnumbered, outmatched. God is the God who will empower you to stand in places where there appears to be an imbalance. That, it makes no sense. That, that, that David should have been able to cut down Goliath with a sling and stones. But I'll tell you how good God is. And then I'm getting in my seat. I'm telling you, God is showing sure up good. Nudge your neighbor one more time. Tell him he's good. He's good. Because Goliath has on all of his armor. Come on, somebody. His legs are covered. His chest is covered. His back is covered. His head is covered, and yet God is so bad that God gets behind in the velocity of a stone, and the stone hits the one place he didn't cover. Okay, y'all don't, y'all don't know when to shout. Because sometimes the enemy thinks he's covered all of his bases, but God knows how. To find the place of vulnerability. And that rock didn't hit him in the chin. No, no, no. That rock didn't hit him in the chest. No, no, no. That rock hit David in the forehead. Come on, somebody. It is the construction of the frontal lobe of the brain whereby when that rock hit the forehead. Because God made us as we are. Oh, I wish you could see what happened Cerebra and, 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 and Goliath drops dead in his tracks. God is so bad that when you get to places of vulnerability, when you stand in faith, God has already made a way out of no way. That's the reason why you're thankful. Have I got any help in here? Because he's redeemed you. Your redemption, not just your redemption from sin, but redemption in the context of you've been in places of vulnerability. God has been there to take care of you. David said, I even live with my enemies. You know you're bad when you can live with the folk that's trying to kill you. And don't nothing happen to you. Have I got any help in here? Go and tell your neighbor, God's been that good to me. That when I look back at vulnerable places, all I can see is the hand of God. See, some of y'all look beautiful this morning, but you didn't look that way not too long ago. You've had some vulnerability in your life. You've been in some places of difficulty. You've been in some places where you thought you would not survive. But the hand of God, I'll say it one more time, the hand of God, you still haven't caught it. The hand of God was there to hold you. Go and tell your neighbor, I'm here this morning because of the hand of God. Okay, you know what I'm going to say, so tell the one behind you. Somebody shout, it's the hand of God. Come on, it's the hand of God. You still didn't get it. It's the hand of God. Now clap like you're losing your mind. It's the hand of God. 
<laughs> that has kept you where you are. Do you hear me this morning? And without the hand of God, you wouldn't look like you look. You know, you know, Kenan, they got this phrase in church that they didn't have when I was growing up. They say this stuff like, I, I don't look like what I've been through. Have I got any help in here? And every time I hear that, I think you ought to open my closet because I kept some of the clothes that represents what I've come through. And I hold on to them because I don't want to forget what I've come through. Because if I don't look back every now and then, I'll convince myself, Brenda, that I've come by my own power and might. But when I look in my closet, at those clothes that are representative of what I've been through. It tells me nothing but the grace of God. I told you I'm tired, but I feel like preaching. If you look in your closet, you'll see the hand of God bringing your life through. Right in church today, you don't look like what you've been through, but tell your neighbor, Come on and go with me to where I've come from. Tell them I've come through hills and valleys. Yes, I have. The way you see me today, Sean, is not how I look yesterday. I've been through the storm and rain. Is there anybody here that has a testimony? Has a testimony. Has a testimony. Has a testimony. Has a testimony of what you've been through and why you praise God like you do. If you got a testimony, stand on your feet. If you got a testimony, lift up your hands and give God praise. Uh, oh yeah! If you got a testimony, look at your neighbor and say, nobody, nobody but Jesus. If you got a testimony, I'm gonna mess with you just one more time. Tell your neighbor, I didn't bring myself bring myself I didn't bring myself the Lord was with me he was on my side that's why I'm here today he made a way out of no way he made a way out of no way is that Because he brought you all the way. Hold up your hands and shout, Lord, I thank you. You waiting on me, you should have been saying it more than once. Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you. Somebody ought to in here. You ought to be giving God some praise right now. He said, bless the Lord, oh my soul. And all that is within me. Bless the Lord. 
with everything you got. Come on, you ought to be blessing him. That means you ought to praise him. Anybody got to praise this morning? Anybody got to praise? Bless him. Bless him. Yes, Lord. Forget not all his benefits. Count your blessings. Name them one by one. Woo! Anybody in here can count some blessings? Yes, Lord. Woo! You ought to be thinking about the goodness of the Lord. All that is within you ought to be blessing him. You ought to be giving him the fruit of your lips. Your hands could wave or clap. And if you're not too cute, your feet could move a little bit. Anybody got a praise? By how far the Lord has brought you through sickness and disease. Just seen and unseen. Woo! Yes, yes, yes. My soul thanks him. Woo! Anybody been sick this year and the Lord healed you? Anybody had some financial trouble but the Lord brought you out? Let me see the 
nobody But you know God did it praise when we look in the rear view mirror see how far you brought us how far you brought us some of us got education far beyond anybody in our family you brought us a mighty long way some folk in here who started out with nothing You've prospered them. We tell you, thank you. Some people in here have been against great opposition. But you brought them through. Some have been sick. Not just a common cold. But sick and looked like it wasn't, they weren't going to get well. brought us so we take a moment to tell you thank you with everything that is within us we tell you thank you we dare not forget all your benefit your good treatment oh thank you Father, it's my prayer that we will live in a state of thanksgiving. As Bishop said, not wait till Thanksgiving Day. Not wait till some national holiday. But that we would live each and every day of our lives. Knowing that it's because of you. Your loving kindness and your tender mercy. That life has not consumed us. You're so faithful. Father, as Bishop has preached this message, Lord, and we're thanking you, God. We're thanking you also for eternal life. Thank you, oh God, for the opportunity to be saved. And we take this moment now to pray for someone that's in this congregation or streaming in. That they will accept this invitation to salvation. To know, oh God, that you redeem our lives from destruction. My prayer is, God, that someone will have the courage to accept Jesus as Lord and you as Father. Lord, there may be someone here that they're saved, but you are, you, you are nudging them to become a part of this church body. Our prayer now is that they'll have the courage to come. Father, that they'll hear you. Get up out of their seats and come. Maybe they're streaming in, Lord, but they'll have the courage now to say, I'm going to become a member of new life. That's our prayer. That as you bless us, God, we want to see others blessed. We want them saved. And we want them a part of the church body. And so our prayer is today that you will give them the courage to come. We thank you now. In Jesus' name. And the people of God said amen and amen. Can you first put your hands together for what was a powerful message? Come on, you can do better than that. There are 150 songs in the book of Psalms. And Psalms 103 is my favorite song. 
It is the psalm that I wake up and sit in my devotional time in the chair in my great room. And I just go through it. Because see, sometimes we have difficulty because, you know, we just are running through life. We have difficulty sitting down and counting our blessings. But Psalms 103 allows me, helps me, prompts me to walk through all the things that God does and has done for me. We're to live a life of thanksgiving. And my brother, my sister, if you're here and you've heard this word, Bishop said it starts with he forgives all of our sins. We give you the invitation to come this morning. If you have not accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you can come this morning. Bible says that at one time we were enemies of God. So if you're not saved, the word says you're an enemy of God. In all your goodness and all of the nice things you do, the Bible still says you're an enemy of God. And so we give you that invitation to come this morning to accept Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Our second invitation is if you're here and the Lord is leading you to this local body, we give you that invitation to come. Bishop and I would love to be your spiritual leaders and this church would love to be your church family. All you have to do is get up out of that chair. We're not going to ask you to say anything. Our transitions ministry is waiting to take you to get some information from you. But today you can be a part of new life. You're streaming in. Today you can be a part of new life. And we believe new life of Memphis is a mighty good place to call home. Hallelujah. Ask your neighbor. Say, neighbor, are you saved? Tell them you can be. Them, I'll even walk down with you. Ask them, are you a member of New Life? Tell them you can be. I'll walk down with you. Bless your God. Bless your Lord. See what happens when you ask. Hallelujah. See what happens if you just ask somebody. Could you? You don't know who's sitting next to you that maybe they're just nervous about coming. But if you just ask them, if you just support them and tell them, I'll, I'll walk with you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And the people of God said, Amen. And Amen. Put those hands together for those who have come this morning. Amen, amen. To God be the glory for what he has done today in our worship. Amen. It's time for us to worship the Lord in our giving. Amen, amen. We thank you so much. Thank you so much for making the Lord first, for committing financially to the life of this church. If you need an envelope, our gatekeepers will assist you. If you just raise your hand, they'll give you an envelope. Thank you for committing to the financial part of this church. You help us make it happen. Thank you so much. Several ways you can give, of course, by envelope, but you can text to give. That's the way Bishop and I give. It makes it real easy. The text number is there on the screen. Now, let me tell you, because someone uh, did this, you can't... Um, uh, what's cash out to that number you have to text to give that to that number you can't cash out to that number all right you can give online mail or kiosk all right are you already going to give us our giving creed i am a kingdom giver i honor the lord with the first and the best of all i have i am a kingdom giver i give to maintain and expand the work of the kingdom as a kingdom giver, I expect, as I give, I will receive. As I sow, I will reap abundantly, above measure, and overflowing. 
as I make the kingdom first in my giving, I decree that my heart is content, my needs are met, and my future is secure. Father, we thank you now for your people. Thank you, Father, for their commitment. And Lord, as we give, we give with the assurance our hearts are secure, that all of our needs will be met, God, and that we can look to you even for what's to come. I pray now, God, that this church will continue to expand and grow, and we know that that happens by way of the financial support of the lives of these people. And so, God, we bless you and we thank you for our future and what is to come. It's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Our announcements are coming. Hello, New Life. I'm Shatara, and this is your New Life News for the week. You don't want to miss our September Bible study series on faith and politics. We will discuss the tension of living in two kingdoms, the believer's role in politics and the issues that impact you. We want you to be involved, so please take the survey by scanning the QR code or using the link sent to your email or text message. We're looking forward to a lively and informative discussion each week beginning Tuesday, September 10th at 6.30 p.m. Continue to stay plugged in with our weekly scheduled ministry opportunities. Tuesday and Thursday morning prayer on the prayer line each Tuesday and Thursday morning at 6.30 a.m. Start your day with Bishop each Wednesday morning at 7 a.m. for Wednesday in the Word. This has been your New Life News for the week. We thank our in-person visitors and online guests for joining us today. Have a blessed week and please share our posts on all social media platforms and subscribe to our YouTube page. And remember, here at New Life of Memphis, we are transforming lives to change the world. You be blessed. Amen, amen. I want to uh, just acknowledge that today is Grandparents Day. Yeah, so if you're a grandparent, come on, stand to your feet, grandparents. These are the unsung heroes and sheroes. Unsung. These are the babysitters. It's picking up from after, after school and pitch hitting and helping to buy school clothes and school supplies. These are the unsung heroes and sheroes. Amen. These the ones that keep them while you go out on the town for a good evening. Y'all know what we do. But we celebrate you, grandparents. Celebrate the fact that you are still uh, on the battlefield. <laughs> still on, you've raised your children and now you're helping uh, to support and uh, raise those grandchildren. And uh, uh, it, is such, it is such a blessing to have grandparents. Right, it is such a blessing. I, I, I think uh, I, I, my, my, my grandmother passed long before I was ever born. And my heart's desire was that I would have known her. Because I think I would have understood my mother better <laughs> had I had seen her mother. All right. Uh, because my children understand me better having had relationship with my mother. Because they tell me all the time, Mama, you just like Amy. So, so we thank you, grandparents, uh, grandfathers, and grandmothers for all that you do. Amen. To all of our visitors, we're glad that you have come to share with us, and we pray that this will not be your last time. And stick around here long enough, and you're going to be able to call this place home. Amen. Come on, stand to your feet. We're on our way out. Thank you for those of you who prayed for us uh, as we went on vacation. Um, last, that's why we weren't here last Sunday, but thank you. Uh, we had an awesome time. I put it on social media. Uh, it was our 38th wedding anniversary. It was uh, unromantic, <laughs> but it was fun. We took our, our, our grown children uh, with us, and I think they enjoyed it more than we did. <laughs> Let's look to the Lord. Father, how we thank you and we bless you for all that we've experienced today. We thank you for the ministry of song, and we thank you for the ministry of word. 
We leave out of here, God, as Bishop always says, in victory and not defeat. We leave out of here in thanksgiving. Father, I pray that you would dispatch your angels to protect us, keep us in all our ways, in our coming in and our going out. Until we meet again is our prayer. In Jesus' name, amen. Go in peace.